Adios 2021 video game review. So at the very start of this game you find yourself face to face with a man that your character has had a long term business relationship with that the protagonist has decided to end something clearly causing some friction between the two of them. I'm not sure I'm going to give away in this video exactly what the relationship is and certainly not why it's coming to an end. If you want to know, it's very easy to find that information. Several of the stores, such as Epic and Steam, include it in the spoiler-free video game description. This game is not so much about plot twists about, oh, I wonder if I can guess where this is going. You know where it's going from right away. And like a Greek tragedy, you're powerless as you watch it unfold before you. But where this sort of thing could easily have been a short film or perhaps a section of a movie, because it's a video game, it makes you feel like you are the one in that situation rather than just watching it, especially because it's first-person perspective, and you do have a little bit of freedom, so it has a stronger impact than if you were only watching it as a short film or a scene. The cel-shaded graphics are quite nicely done, especially some of the lighting. There's this... Um, the way the sun is is setting in in some parts, for example, I thought really, you know, very strong atmosphere. There is not an awful lot you can actually do in this game. It's very linear, very limited. It is in part a walking simulator, although you can run and jump and there's a map area. You have some freedom in choosing which order to do certain things but you are forced to do specific things the game has set out and in the specific ways that it has. It's not really a game that is about a lot of freedom like an Assassin's Creed or Grand Theft Auto type of game. It's more that you, you're going through the routine that the, the farmer that you're playing as evidently always goes through and you get an appreciation for why the farmer has been very happy doing this even though it's the kind of work that a lot of people would not choose on their own, especially today. Right, I just realized I forgot to mention I love this game. I'm not, nothing critical I say is like bitterness or, or any kind of thing. I'm just, I'm more describing and, you know, a little bit of mild critique, but I'm not saying that it, sh that you should have much more freedom. I, again, th it, it fits the themes, you know, this is his life. It's not that, oh, he can just do whatever he wants. This is what he always does. This is how it goes. And, yeah, you know, you can... You really get why it's so positive for him, especially as we get to know him. You know, if not for the quite good voice acting and lines spoken, then, you know, yeah, it, it would... You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are, I, I haven't played any, but I'm pretty sure there are, like, farm work simulators where, yeah, you know, you're just doing it because the player thinks it might be fun to pretend to be a farmer. This is not quite that. This is, there's more of a, a solemn nature to it. It's it's more of a, you know, it's there in the title. Adios, you know, the, the let's see, the epic games, uh, oh, hmm, wait, oh, am I thinking of the Steam one, there's a, yeah, yeah, the Steam store description ends with three words, adios means goodbye, and that's very much, this is goodbye, this, this is final, and, yeah, you know, you, the fact that they, over the course of this game, you see all the things that the farmer is giving up, you know, that, that just, it hits much harder than, because, because really, essentially, this could have been really, really short, you know, you know, shorter than it is, but I, yeah, I think they made the exact right choice. Now, when playing point-and-click games, which I've spent a lot of time doing, I'm quite fond of the subgenre, I don't usually find myself wishing that I could control the character with WASD. I think this might be the first time I've encountered that, but I think it really works. It really makes you feel like you are the protagonist, not simply controlling the protagonist. 
And, you know, it's, it's not that I now wish that every single point-and-click game were like this. I think for... Yeah, I've, I've been very happy with point-and-click games having this third-person perspective frequently, like, from, from the side. Right, I suppose... Um, I guess, right, thinking about it, I guess technically... Penumbra and Amnesia. I've played the first two Amnesia games. I'm working my way towards the third. It, I guess those qualify as point and click, don't they? It's, just, it's new to me that you can... When, it, when I was younger, point and click meant the perspective is from the side, not first person. You cannot control your character with the keyboard. You click a place to make the character go there. Right, yes. So, I have played... Others and yeah, you know, Penumbra and Amnesia and this, I think WASD makes a lot of sense. I really didn't feel the need for it in the, I guess, let's go with classic point and click style. Now, it did not bother me personally, but I can imagine might bother some that this, while qualifying for point and click in mechanics, can't quite be called a puzzle game. There's no real puzzles to solve. There's tasks to carry out. And as long as that's enough for you, it was for me, you won't be disappointed by that fact. Just go in, just just don't go in expecting that. Uh, you know, I, I don't think I've ever come across a game with point-and-click mechanics that wasn't a puzzle game at all. But, it, yeah, it was, it was a very interesting experience. And Again, I absolutely agree, because it, it would feel kind of weird if there were puzzles, because at the start of the game, the farmer has already made his mind up, and for a lot of the game, you're doing the chores that he does, yeah, seemingly every day, certainly very frequently, so, you know, if it was like, oh, you know, now you got to figure out how to do it, it'd be like, how does that make sense? You know, a lot of point-and-click games, a lot of puzzle games in general, the character is in an unusual situation. And while, you know, this, there's finality to the situation, it's not something you have to figure out. He, you know, he already knows where he wants to go with this. And, and again, I, th I thought it was very interesting. I, uh, I'm not... I haven't played a huge amount of games where the protagonist is in a situation that he's just 100% this is this is just what he does you know usually you're applying skills that you've learned elsewhere to a new situation now the dialogue tree doesn't really seem to allow you to change situations so much as maybe the tone of the conversation like I've said, this is not really that kind of game. Though, through the dialogue options, you get to know the kind of person that the farmer is, and via conversation, you get a sense of the relationship between him and the the other guy. And we get a lot of details about the farmer's life, his relationship with his late wife. Yeah, she couldn't make it in time, missed the bus. And you really come to understand how things ended up the way they did, why he's ending the relationship. They talk about his experiences with Vietnam, his youth, and given how short the game is, those who, unlike me, do not have any physical pain preventing them from sitting for longer, it, you know, you could easily complete this in a single sitting, and I would say that's probably a good way to do it if you're able to. I imagine that this, it, it will probably play at least a little bit better than breaking it into multiple sittings, though it's not, you know, it didn't, I was still very, very happy with it. You know, obviously there are countless games out there that you cannot complete without taking at least some breaks. I think it's very intentional, and I agree with the decision, that this is as as short as it is. So to detail, yeah, this took me just short of an hour and 20 minutes. I've seen some completed in an hour or so, and yeah, that honestly, let's see, did I see one that completed in like 41 minutes? You know, I could see how you could shave it down some. And, you know, there, there was definitely at least one point where I, 
it took me a few minutes to figure out exactly what I was supposed to do, which, you know, it doesn't qualify as a puzzle, it's just, I'm still getting the hang of, you know, it's been a while since I played video games regularly, I, there's, there's, yeah, anyway, um, so, the, right, um, the, the other subgenres, you know, I'm gonna briefly, yeah, so I think the most significant subgenres, or tags, on the, the Steam store, you know, I've already mentioned Walking Simulator and Point and Click, Interactive Fiction is a really great, yeah, and, and Narrative story rich and atmospheric oh this one does say choices matter hmm. it's possible I missed something <clears throat> in that and yeah you know so basically you are you can you can pick things up or examine them using the use key or e usually and the you know you can put it down or, or like, apply it to somewhere by pointing to the right place and pressing E again. And sometimes the the left mouse button is also, you know, there's, there's certain things you can do, certain situations where that is, uh, yeah. You can, you can crouch and jump and walk and strafe and that's, and, and run. I quite appreciate especially because there's a part or two where you have to go like it's not extremely far but I'm really glad that they allowed us to just run and the camera is purely first person perspective and let's see yeah and the yeah among the tasks are fetch quests and it is, let's see, it is very much the, uh, let's see, yeah, it doesn't really have cutscenes as such, you know, basically, every, yeah, everything is in the first person perspective, and usually you can at least, you know, there's, there's at least one time in the game where, you really can't do anything other than move the camera a little but there is still at least that you you basically always have control over something and how much control the game gives you is in part about you know what is what would the farmer do in this situation and what is there the freedom to do and The, the, yeah, the audio work is quite good. Um, really good sound design for the various places, making it feel more like you're, you know, actually interacting with, with stuff rather than merely watching animation or something. The Yeah, it's not really challenging, but it is a very engaging experience. And there are achievements on Epic, which is where I have it. I think also. Uh, let me think. Where is it that you? Uh, hmm. I'm not off hands. Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, achievements on Steam. Or uh, hmm. can you not see achievements if you don't own the game? I forget. Um, yeah. Um, I can imagine it it does say steam achievements under the yeah right and there is controller support I played it with a mouse and keyboard myself the replayability is not through the roof but yeah you know there are a couple of places where you have different option you know um, dialogue tree options that yeah, you know, you might replay and see what is, you know, what happens if you choose this option instead. 
I did not run into any bugs or glitches. And over the course of the game, you see a bunch of different parts of the, the farm. You, you know, I'm not going to go into whether you eventually leave the farm, but a lot of the game certainly is on the farm. And they do a really good job making everything feel lived in, feel authentic. And also, there's enough variety to the settings that you don't get bored. And I realize it might sound silly to say that about such a short game, but... You know, I, I do think that, you know, when it comes to video games, there's a, a certain expectation that we're, e either we're going to get to visit a number of different settings, even if it's fairly short, you know, this and Dear Esther, both short games, you still get to, you know, visit a bunch of different settings, and... You know, if, if there are very few settings, then that's part of the point of the game. And, yeah, the level design is quite well made. And there's good environmental storytelling. And I think that is everything. But, yeah, um, I'm not sure I'm going to be replaying it soon. But right now, I'm not really looking to replay games. I have so many that I want to get to that I've never played before, but I could see, you know, down the line, you know, certainly it is the kind of thing you'll you'll maybe want to wait until you it's not so fresh in your mind since there's not a huge amount of, you know, like comparatively I've played through let's see was it I, yeah, I've played through Portal 1 several times, didn't really need to, to, like, not have it fresh in my mind, you know, that's maybe more because of the, the puzzles and such, you know, and just the, the satisfaction of solving puzzles. Here it's very much about the emotional engagement of the, the narrative, and, yeah, for that reason, I would recommend, you know, it's the kind of thing where you'll want to not have it fresh in your mind before you replay it. And yeah, then there's definitely enjoyment to be had. And there's also one or more achievements that you simply cannot get in just one playthrough, at least as far as I've been able to tell.